Today is the day. It is the new start to a new growing season here at the farm. It's the earliest we've ever planted soybeans. Today it is April 15th. The crop insurance date is April 20th. So we're planting five days before the crop insurance date and it is very chilly out today as we're starting to plant. Dad's getting the planter folded out right now. This is the first field he worked yesterday. We're gonna make sure we get everything working on the planter before I leave and go work another field. The soil conditions out in this field are just about perfect. The soil is nice and loose. There is just a little bit of moisture. We work this at about a four inch depth. The only real concern is it's only about 40 degrees out today. And that is why we are planting soybeans today rather than corn. I've now managed my way into the tractor cab and have to make the first adjustment inside here. Dad's got a phone call he's got to take but we gotta deflate the tires in this system. To deflate the tires, I need to unlock the system, and then I should just have to hit this bottom arrow on the bottom of the tires. And I can hear the pressure starting to go out of the valve down here, so I know we're starting to go down. These back tires were at 26 on the road, and now they're deflating all the way down to 10. Now I got my guidance line selected on here, so this is the line that the planter is actually gonna follow. You can tell I'm about seven foot off from the edge of the field. So I'll get the planter backed into the spot we need and then we should start slamming some seed in the ground. Drawbar's gotta be down, locked. This has gotta be in like five or six. That's right. After making that little pass, we're now going to put everything down just an extra half an inch or a half turn, which is a quarter of an inch. So rather than planting it about an inch and a half deep, we're now going to be an inch and three quarter. There's nothing I grow there. Dad's concern is that I got the first row of the planter a little bit too close to the edge of the field here and it's basically in a lot of these corn stalk residue. Honestly, I don't think it's a huge concern. He thinks it's a big deal, but all these outside edges of these fields are all manually driven, so it's not like it's gonna be perfect. It's not like I'm gonna be consistently six inches away from this berm right here, so he's gonna take it a little bit farther. Otherwise, he's gonna maybe change some things, which is contrary to what I would do. figured out what the problem was as to why the planter was planting as close to that little berm there or the edge of the field is because I had accidentally imported last year's field boundary which we were using with the previous globe on this tractor so now that we have the new boundary that I made for the new globe since they're using a different correction system I'm about 30 inches over from where we were so we'll try that now hopefully that solves the problem so when you went, you kind of went around the pole like that then? It, yeah, it's this is all manually that's, driven. That's what I thought. The only one that's not manually driven is the one on the fence. Over there. Yeah, it's a straight line. Cleaners look all right. I helped Dad. We went around the outside edge of the field making headlands at this farm. He's just about to go second pass on this field. He'll call me if he has any questions. Now I'm gonna head back up to the farm. We need to start working the next field that we'll be planting soybeans with. So we'll head back up to the farm and get the tractor ready. Okay, made it back to the farm and alas here, our chariot awaits, our 9R. With the field cultivator, we're gonna be running, preparing the next soybean field to be planted. Now on a typical year, we plant corn prior to planting soybeans. And that's mostly because corn takes longer amounts of heat units to grow in the season. Plus, our crop insurance date here in Southwest Minnesota is April 10th. We can start planting corn, where for soybeans, it's April 20th. So we're encouraged to plant corn before soybeans. Although, like I mentioned, we are planting soybeans first this year. Like the field we're gonna be digging today, this will be soybeans this upcoming growing season. And the main reason we're planting soybeans first this year 
is because normally this time of the year, April, the temperatures start to look like warmer and warmer and warmer every day. Hang on, I gotta start pulling the digger out here. But this year, see we're getting the digger folded out as we're talking, multitasking. But this year, because the temperatures are looking like they're gonna be decreasing, decreasing, decreasing for the next 10 to 14 days, we're gonna start planting soybeans, which have a little bit more tolerance to the cooler temperatures when they're starting to sprout and emerge out of the soil. So basically, we're gonna hopefully spread across a little bit of our workload, start to take off some of the pressure in the back end of planting by not waiting to plant some of the beans. I have my guidance line already selected for this field, so this is the angle I'll be working the field at. So we might as well put her in forward and start letting her till. And here we are, making the first tillage pass of the year for myself, working 46 half and a feet at a time. I'm working roughly 3.3 inches deep, have some pressure down on the baskets. Here you can see all the blinds I gotta do yet to complete this field before the day's over. I went a whole round now at the three and a half inch depth. Figured we better jump out, see what kind of job it's doing. Looks like I'm hitting the perfect three and a half inch depth with the digger and the tractor. The main thing is I just wanna make sure I'm working up the tractor tires with the implement. That way I'm not creating any compaction, not starting to hurt yield before we even put any seed out here. So we're just wanting to make sure we get deep enough that there isn't any like compaction level underneath. This field that I'm in particularly has a lot of corn stalk residue from the previous year's corn. And that's all, oh here look, a little tornado's coming through. It's just a little dirt, or what do they call that? A dust devil. There was a little dust devil that just blew through. And that, that brings up the point I was thinking of is there's a lot of residue out in this field, a lot of corn stalk residue, because we didn't have a lot of snow this winter, we didn't have a lot of moisture, so a lot of that stuff didn't decompose like it usually does. So we're trying to bury some of that with the digger, no more than what we normally do, but it's definitely something I'm managing and looking back for more as I'm driving, because if you get too much of that corn stalk residue built up under the digger, it can actually plug the digger, and it just basically moves a huge like leaf pile full of leaves the whole time the digger moves. The up arrow twice. Yep. Okay, now put it back. So far, day one of tillage at the farm is going well. Haven't broken anything on the implement itself. We do have the other 9R running over in a field Right there, it's another 240 acre field. So right here is a 500 acre field that we're hoping to get done today. We are just about done with 160 acres. So we still have another 240 acres yet to go. It's three o'clock. Hoping to get that done tonight because tomorrow the plan is to plant these two farms. In the tractor that I'm running, this has the updated display. They call it the G Generation 5 display from John Deere. And this one is really nice. It has this feature where you can just pinch on the map and it'll change the direction that you can see it. You can also pay to have a satellite view of Google Earth, but we don't pay for it since we are just renting this tractor for this spring. And because we're just renting this tractor that I'm driving, once our part-time guy who's in that other field goes home, I will eventually switch over from running this tractor to running the tractor we own because there's no use to putting hours on a machine that we're paying by the hour versus just putting them on a machine that we already use. So we're really only using this machine during the day when our part-time guy's here. So eventually, when six o'clock rolls around, he'll be gone, and then we'll jump over into that tractor. I'm doing it. I'm GPS tracking on this line. I'm only going three and a half miles an hour because I don't want to hit a fence post, and so far, it looks like I'm staying plenty far away, and that should match exactly with what the planter has. I finished the headlands on that 160 acre field. The guidance around the headlands worked absolutely perfect. I'm honestly impressed. So now I just pulled the, the digger over to, this is my soybean field for the next year. So I figured, you know, it's only right. I want my crop to be just perfect. So I better get out and make sure all of the sweeps are all set and there is nothing broken on the digger before we start working on what is gonna be my 240 acres of soybeans next year. So far, I'm not seeing anything that's broken or looks like it needs to be replaced before we get started.
now we need to get our new guidance line since this field gets worked in this direction and that field was worked in this direction so to do that we will come over to this page my field is called home 240 because it's directly across from the main farm we'll select that hit ok and now it has our line is spring 25 tillage and now it has our line in there and we should be able to start working first time ever doing tillage on my own personal field that i'm renting for next year and we are working the ground so far i have 80 acres of my field worked our part-time helper is just taking the digger that I was running home. It is now six o'clock and he has to go for a meeting. So I'm gonna be switching. That way I'm driving the bigger field cultivator. That way I can hopefully get done just a little bit earlier tonight. Let's get the steering wheel down and yeah. Here's the old generation four display. And there's a big difference I'm noticing after loving the gen five back to this one. For instance, when I come to the map here, I'm not able to pinch and zoom on the map. I have to use this little magnifying glass. Not that it's a big deal, but it is kind of annoying. Plus, on that G5 display, the display is just bigger, so I can see more things active on this screen without having to go from different screen to different screen. Irregardless of the design, the tech works the exact same way. I'm still able to use the exact same guidance lines, everything sharing over. The implement is set up almost the same. This implement's just six foot wider, so I'm able to cover more ground, but otherwise it has all the same attachments, all the same functionality. So basically, it's the same sort of machine. It's not much different to run, but this is the one we're gonna be running for tonight until we're done. I've been running this four wheel drive and this digger for about an hour. The sun is fastly starting to disappear behind the horizon, so I figured before the sun goes down, we better do a quick one over make sure there's nothing we got to change because it's a lot easier to change during the daylight than with a bunch of flashlights. Everything's looking good so far. Not seeing anything that needs to be fixed, which is a good sign for day one. With the digger checked over now, we'll get back to it. And it looks like we could have a good sunset. So we'll get the drone up, get some cool drone shots for you. to get out again not to check anything but just to stretch a little bit it makes for a long day of sitting in the cab of that tractor and just to enjoy the beautiful sunset that is currently happening but I was noticing while I was working there and when I had the drone up that this is the field of our, of our farm that last year we had 13 inches across all of our fields and this is the one that we lost about 40 acres of just completely drowned out areas and you can see here in this draw there's a fair amount of corn stalk residue here, but out there where we had all the water sitting for two to three days, much of the corn was just disintegrated and there is not much residue that is even left out there from the little bit of beans that we did harvest out there. And even an area from like here where there's a little bit of corn stalk residue, compare that to an area here where the corn actually stayed growing and everything. It'll be interesting to see what this does to my bean crop that I'll be planting in. Hopefully it affects the yields positively and not negatively, but I guess I won't know until the combine rolls out here about five months from now. As for the replant policy, us planting five days ahead of the federal crop insurance spring planting date here in Southwest Minnesota. What that's gonna affect me is it's basically gonna make me ineligible for replanting payments. So say for example, like here where 30 acres drowns out, I would not get paid the three bushels, which is roughly $30 that I would get to go out and stuck in more beans but I should mention on all of my acres I did purchase a replant policy so I will be getting paid replanting because that date instead of being the 20th I paid a, an additional amount of premium so now my insurance date got moved up to April 10th so actually all of my acres I will be eligible for a replant policy I'm not 100% sure what dad did I would have to ask him and I didn't ask him, so I'm not for sure what he did on his acres. But for me, all the research I've done, it says the sooner you can plant soybeans, the higher your yields are. And prices haven't been great this year, so I'm trying to get higher yields. So that's why I'm out here five days ahead of the federal crop insurance state, getting ready to plant soybeans.
the plan for the rest of the night is I will get the rest of this field worked. I have about 100 acres yet to go. And then tomorrow, early in the morning, I will get the planter rolling out here and start planting my first ever very own soybean crop. I have 240 acres of soybeans I'm going to get planted early in the morning. But the sun's going down. I got some work to do. So that's it for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see me plant my own first soybean field and follow along all growing season with that. That's it from beautiful Sunset, Minnesota. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. We'll see you in the next one.